Okay, in this video lesson, we'll begin to look at the Pythagorean identity, begin to apply it. But before we can apply, there's a particular prerequisite skill that you need. And that skill is determining the quadrant where theta would be located. So, early on, we look at our Cartesian plane. In our Cartesian plane, we have quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in each of the four quadrants, we begin to identify each ordered pair's signs. So in quadrant 1, the signs were positive, positive. 2, negative, positive. Negative, negative in quadrant 3. And quadrant 4 was positive, negative. And of course, our ordered pairs were written in the form x, y. And so now, we're going to transition to the trigonometry. All six of the trigonometric functions could be written in terms of x's and y's. Sine was simply y, cosine was x, tangent was y over x, cosecant 1 over y, simply the reciprocal of sine, secant was the reciprocal of cosine 1 over x, and tangent was the reciprocal of tangent. Cotangent was the reciprocal of tangent. And so when we look closer at this, we see that cosine and secant both are related to the x's. I'm not saying secant equals x, but we can see that the x is only represented when using secant. Inversely, sine and cosecant, they are closely related to the y. So, we could set up a generic ordered pair that shows that our x coordinate is associated with either cosine or secant while the y coordinate, coordinate is associated with sine and cosecant. But now when we look at tangent and cotangent, they work with both the x and the y. So we'll look a little closer to see if we can come up with some patterns that's associated with tangent and cotangent. So when we look in quadrant one, we see our signs are positive, positive. Generically, we can say the signs are the same. And so if I set these two signs up in a ratio form like tangent and cotangent are, positive divided by positive is always a positive. Well, let's go to quadrant two and see what's happening there. Well, in quadrant two, our signs are negative positive. Generally speaking, though, the signs are different. And so when we divide different signs, our answer is always negative. And we move to quadrant three. And again, we're focusing on just tangent and cotangent. In quadrant three, our signs negative is negative. Generally speaking, both signs are the same. So when we divide same signs, negative divided by negative is still a positive, though. And when we move to quadrant four, in quadrant four, positive, negative, but generally speaking, the signs are different. When we divide different signs, in this case, negative divided by positive, we get a negative. So when we look closer at these four scenarios, we notice when tangent or cotangent is positive, they're located in either quadrant one, or quadrant 3. And inversely, when tangent and cotangent are negative, they're located in either quadrants 2 and quadrants 4. So let's uh, put together all of this information. So we see that sine is directly associated with y, just like cosecant associated with y. Cosine was associated with x, while secant was associated with x. But when we looked at tangent and cotangent, the criteria was if these were positive, then they were the same, the signs were the same, which means they were either located in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3. Cotangent, if it was negative, that meant the signs were different, and they would have been located in quadrants 2 and quadrants 4. 
So here's our resource we'll be using to help us determine what quadrant our theta is located. So let's look at an example. So we got six different examples to consider. So it says, use the given inf information to determine the quadrant where the terminal side of theta is located. So in the first example, we were told that secant of theta is negative 4. Well, we saw earlier secant, sorry, let's go back, secant was associated with the x. So, there's our x. x is negative. And cosecant, it's saying, is greater than 0. Well, greater than 0 means it's positive. And it says secant, cosecant is the y. So, our y is positive. So when we have an ordered pair where x is negative and y is positive, that's quadrant 2. So there's an example on showing how to take the information it gave us to help us determine the quadrant. Just one piece at a time. So if we try a different one, we've got cotangent theta equals negative 5 7. Our resource says if tangent or cotangent is negative, that means my signs are different. So we can't tell which quadrant it's in. We know the signs are different, but it definitely will be one of these two quadrants. So what I'm going to put is, I'm just going to put the signs, the, uh, my signs are different. And you'll see shortly how this is going to help me. Next, it says sine of theta is less than zero. So let's see. Sine, sine was y. So, my y is less than 0, so y is negative. So now, with this information in red, we'll be able to create our ordered pair. We know that y is negative, and the other says the other coordinate is different. What was different from negative? Positive. So there's our ordered pair. Positive, negative, which is located in quadrant 4. Next example. Now we have cosecant is negative radical 10 over 2. And notice very little emphasis is being placed on the number. I'm just concerned about the signs because the signs will dictate which quadrant we're located. So let's see cosecant. Let's remind ourselves cosecant is associated with the y. So that's saying our y is negative. And cotangent says cotangent is greater than zero. So cotangent is positive. So if it's positive, my signs are the same. So they're the same. So now I can begin to create my ordered pair. My ordered pair, I definitely know the y is negative. And this is telling me, ah, the signs will be the same. The same if negative will be negative. And this is usually the place where some students get a little bit thrown off. Here, cotangent is greater than zero. That's positive. So this number is positive, but I'm putting a negative uh, uh, sign here. And again, this is why you just stay methodical. If cotangent is positive, that means the signs are the same. Because how could I get a positive value here? Well, cotangent is x over y. x negative divided by y negative will give you this positive value. So you just want to stay focused and use the resource. So let's go to the next example. Uh, tangent is negative. Well, let's see what it says. Tangent. When tangent is negative, the signs are different. All right, so we put in, oops, I forgot to tell you that was quadrant three. So it's different. Now next, secant is less than zero, so secant is negative. What does that say, secant? Ah, secant is just my x. So here, the x is negative. We can begin to create the ordered pair. All we know about the ordered pair is the x is negative. And notice the order I'm doing this. I'm not doing it left to right. I'm doing it with what I definitely know. I definitely know the x is negative. Once I place that, then it says, put the other one that's different. Different from negative, positive. Well, negative, positive is in quadrant two. Okay, next example. 
we've got cosine. Well, let's just see our resource. Cosine is the x. It says x is negative. So, as our x is negative. Then it says tangent. Well, theta is greater than zero, so that's positive. So, let's see what it says. When tangent is positive, the signs are the same. So, I'll put same. Now, let's create our ordered pair. All I know is definitely x coordinate is negative. And then it says the second coordinate is the same. Same as negative, negative. That puts us in quadrant three. The last example, we're given cosecant. And again, I'm gonna say it again. We're not even concerned about the actual value. We're concerned about the sign. All right, cosecant, cosecant is y. So, y is positive cosine well, let's see what it says about cosine cosine is x and in this case x is greater than zero x is positive so we have both coordinates here so both the x and the y is positive puts us in quadrant one okay so we'll practice some of this but this prerequisite skill will be necessary be critical once it's time to actually apply the Pythagorean identity.